And we are live. Hello, homemakers and everyone in the chat or on the replay. On today's episode of Homemaking with Purpose, we are going to dive into holiday prep. Holiday prep in regards to food and finances. Money is tight right now for a lot of families. So we've got to make sure we're making the best decisions. But before we get into it, welcome to Homemaking with Purpose, where we bring to you the best ideas, interviews, and information for today's homemaker. I am Denise Jordan, your host. And tonight's episode of Homemaking with Purpose is brought to you by Apron Diva, Five Days of Deals. Each day for the next four days, because the five days of deals started yesterday, for the next four days, a different set of aprons will be 20% off for that day only when you use the discount code DEALDAYS20 at checkout. Quantities are limited and we won't restock this season. The Diva Dale, well, well, well I guess I can talk. The Diva Deal of the Day is our autumn. It is the pumpkin spice and everything nice and buttercup, which is our yellow and white buffalo check apron and dish towel combination. So stop by each day to see what the Diva Deal of the Day is at www.aprondiva.com. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. So viewers, if you have a question, be sure to put um, hashtag Q in front of your um, comment because that way I'll be sure to see it because Mickey Blue Skies probably won't be on with us tonight. And so that'll just help me to check things out. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'll just say real quick, hello to the chat. It is so nice to have all of you join me. I'm not going to do a bunch of greetings right now. I want to jump right into it. So, okay, we're talking food and finances tonight as we get into the spirit of preparing for the holiday season. So for many of us, there are two or three holidays that we will be preparing for. Thanksgiving and Christmas, Thanksgiving and Hanukkah, or it could be Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Kwanzaa. So each of these holidays, regardless of which of the ones you are celebrating or honoring, the first thing you need to do is establish a budget. Because each of them typically include a family gathering, and cooking a large amount of food or baking some traditional dishes. So it's definitely going to put a strain on the old budget and also on what you've got in your pantry. So you definitely want to make sure that you set a budget. And I have to say, when it comes to budgets, I used to think budget was a dirty word. I mean, I thought budget was a bad word, but now I know that a budget is my friend because what a budget will do is give you a guideline, a monetary plan to work with them. So there may typically be some additional decor requirements as well as food requirements and different things like that. So you're going to want to set monies aside for that. So that's why we're going to start off looking at the budget. So let me just ask those of you in the chat or if you're on the replay, how many of you routinely plan a holiday budget for decor and food? Tell me in the chat if you're on live and tell me in the replay comments if you're on team replay. How many of you routinely plan a holiday budget for decor and food? I must admit, 
I didn't used to do that. I used to not set a budget and I would just go willy nilly and just shop for whatever I needed. You could easily spend three to five hundred dollars on food and certainly you could spend a couple hundred dollars on decor items if you're not careful. So while you guys are typing in the chat, let me know how many of you routinely spend or rather routinely save money for your holiday budget. How many of you routinely plan? And India Princess is back with us again tonight. Hard Hustle Mom says she can't wait for the holidays. She's so excited. She's already getting her decorations ready for the setup. I'm still putting up my fall decor. So I haven't started on Christmas yet, but I would love to start that. And then Nefertiri uh, is greeting everyone. So, and then we've got Nita B and Jerry Barber. And then we've got Vicki from South Carolina. Kadia is on. Hey, my little sister, Joy is here. I believe Joy is in the UK. And uh, Kadia is reminding you guys to hit the like button. So yeah, please do that. Amelia, Crafty Ella, Sue, and Ronnie. Hello, everyone. So now Ronnie says she doesn't set a holiday budget for food and decorations. Okay. Chocolate Bar Cottage, who's Michelle, says they do set a Christmas budget, and that includes gifts, decor, extra groceries, cards, posters, etc. Now, I hadn't even thought about those things. Tonight, as we talk about holiday budget, I was pretty much looking at food and decor. But yes, Michelle, you are absolutely right in saying that we also do need to take a look at gifts as well as Christmas cards and postage and all those kinds of things. I'll talk more about that next week in next week's session on holiday prep. But tonight, we're pretty much going to be looking at the prep right around home decor and food and that kind of thing. So Nefertiri said a few months ago during the peak of the food shortages, you mentioned it was why that I mentioned it was wise to start buying food for the holidays. So she took my advice and she's been allotting $50 a shopping trip for holiday food. Boom, Nefertiri, you are on top of it. Definitely on top of things. And that's certainly a good idea that you started just kind of planning ahead and taking $50 and allotting that to shopping for the holidays because it can get quite pricey and especially if the things that you're looking for are some of the things that might be in short supply. Jerry says she doesn't routinely plan. She just picks up things here and there. Vicki says budget, budget, budget. She says a budget is a, bust, is a must nowadays because of the increase in prices. And I have to agree with her on that. And just Destiny is glad she finally caught a live. Hey, Destiny, we're glad you're with us. Now, Ronnie said she usually uses the same decor for Thanksgiving. And then for food, she cooks with food that they typically eat, except for the turkey and the ham, which is probably an additional purchase at that time of the year. And then Vicky says budgeting for gas, filling up the tank is necessary, especially when traveling for the holidays. And yeah, I'm coming to that. And then Nita B says she also starts picking up extra items, especially for desserts all year. But one of her gifts is always a family meal for family and friends. What a nice gift that you put together a family meal and just kind of give that. I not thought of that, but that is certainly a lovely idea. And then Michelle says she picks things up here and there throughout the year and also reuses as much as possible. She likes antique and vintage, so she uses things from years past. And uh, she's got some from her childhood. Okay, so people, some people plan the budget. Some people don't. Some people reuse items in regards to decorations. And I think probably most of us will do that somewhat. But when you're looking at budget, there is some, or rather at decor, there are some additional decor needs. So you probably want to set some things aside. So how do I form a budget? Or how do I suggest you form a budget 
Well, one of the things that I suggest is that you try to estimate about how much you spent last year. And then add an additional $100 or $125 to that budget because of inflation. I know the last grocery haul I made, it was a good $125 higher than what I normally would have spent. So I'm suggesting you add a, an additional one to $125 on that um, holiday budget. And then ask yourself, where do you really need to spend those dollars? Do you have decor from last year that you can pull out and use this year. And that's one of the things that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be using holiday decor from last year, this year, and then what I don't put out, I'm going to donate. Now, I will admit, I did buy a few new things for this year, but they're in the same color scheme as the things I had last year. I bought a new coffee mug, some new dish towels, which I'm going to put out tomorrow, and then a plaque to put out on the front porch. Not very much. My husband did look kind of like sideways because he had just brought down five bins of fall decor from the attic. So he's like, seriously, you're getting more stuff. But I promised him once I got the decor out, he wouldn't have to put as much back up in the attic as he took down. He said, we'll see. But anyway, so there is that. And then are there things that you can make? Like, are there some things that you can DIY to prep for the holiday season? Now, I'm not a big DIYer. I typically hate DIY, but there are some things I like to do from a DIY perspective at Thanksgiving time and sometimes at Christmas. For example, for the children's table, I will put up a nice little, maybe a five or six foot banquet table my husband will cover it with brown paper and then he will draw turkeys and leaves and other things on this brown paper and then set a um, basket of crayons on the table for the kids to sit there and they can draw different things, that kind of thing. So that's one of the things that I DIY. Rather than buying some cutesy tablecloth for the kids' table, we kind of DIY our own and the kids enjoy that. And there's probably some other things for those of you that are craftsy that you can DIY. But even if you're DIYing something, it's still got to be in the budget because money is money regardless of where you are spending it. The other thing that I suggest that you can possibly do is use colorful paper plates. So you could go with a white tablecloth or a um, neutral colored tablecloth and go with colorful paper plates for Thanksgiving and Christmas to kind of juice things up and save a little money that way. But keep it in mind, those things are disposable. And as you know, disposable products are always pricey. I've got some Christmas dishes and some dishes I like to pull out at Thanksgiving that I'm going to get out this year, try to save a little money that way. Depends upon how many people we're having, because one of the things that I've learned is if we're having more than 20 or 25 people, I'm not getting out my good china anymore because my sisters don't want to have to wash that stuff. They prefer I have something disposable. So we'll go with something easy like that. So whatever it is that you plan to do, you just have to make sure you include it in the budget and make a plan on where you're going to allocate certain of those dollars. And then coming back to decor, where do you, what do you have from last year either that you can use or can you be a little bit more simplistic this year? I'm not saying go minimalist, be a minimalist or anything like that, but can you do less? I'm just asking. Can you do less, but still recognize the holiday season? So tell me in the comment section whether or not that's possible. Let's just kind of engage for a little bit and we'll see what people are saying over here. Um, let's 
So Joy is thanking me for remembering that she's from the UK. You guys are having your uh, Thanksgiving this week in the UK, I believe. Isn't it this Saturday or something like that? I thought it was coming right up. So Nita's been picking up. Well, I already mentioned that. And yes, that is a great gift that Nita suggested, giving a family meal to a family. That's wonderful. So Ronnie says it's normally just her husband and the three boys and granddaughter. But if they have a bigger group, then she would definitely form a budget. Hey, Rachel, how are you and that new baby doing? Okay. So um, there's that. All right. The other thing that I might want to suggest is that you get your family involved and see what ideas they may have to help decorate for the holiday season. Maybe your kids want to make something. They may want to make a bunch of little turkeys and hand prints, little hand turkeys and decorate pumpkins and all those kinds of things. And that can make your house festive for the particular season. Talk to them about what they want to do. But if you feel like you must purchase some new items, let's say you're changing your theme, then choose items that will work with what you already have so you don't have to buy too much. And if you want to change your holiday theme, I suggest you wait until next year to change your holiday theme. Wait until the end of the season and catch those new things at the end of the season clearance that will work with the theme you want to switch to but go along with the same theme you already have so that you can use the things that you've got, but plan the new thing for the next year and then whatever you purchase. Because remember, you can break the bank buying things on sale at the end of the season. Give yourself a limit on spending even at the after season clearance sales. And right now, if you absolutely positively have to buy some things, Hobby Lobby, Michael's and Joann's has many of their fall and Thanksgiving items, 40 and 50% off. And then they have their Christmas items, 40 and 50% off. So now was a good time to shop to add to the collection that you've already got. And then if you're looking at changing your theme for next year, you might want to wait a few more weeks so you can get them at that lower price point. Or if you're afraid those things will be gone, then go ahead and pick them up. But remember, it's coming out of your budget for next year. All right. So let me just remind those of you who just jumped on what it is we're talking about. We're talking about holiday preparation, food and finances. And right now we're talking a little bit about the finances and planning a holiday budget. I also want to remind everyone that tonight's episode of Homemaking with Purpose is brought to you by Apron Divas Five Days of Deals. And tonight's deals include the pumpkin spice and everything nice apron, which we call autumn, and the yellow and white buffalo check uh, apron we call buttercup with a dish towel. So be sure and check those things out using the discount code DEALDAYS20 at checkout. All right, so now let's talk about food. So um, Rachel says that she's doing well and that the baby is three months old now and growing fast. Yes, they do grow so fast. And just something that's off target totally. I've been watching Call the Midwife on Netflix. I'm into season five. And so there's two or three babies born in every episode. And it's just been so much fun and interesting to watch. My husband said he hears babies crying every night. So I had to use my earbuds last night so that I didn't disturb his sleep. But but that's what I've been watching lately. So now Vicky says she will buy desserts for the holidays. Preferably, she prefers to bake her own desserts and save a little money using what she has on hand. You know, Vicky, I have to wonder if making her own desserts, depending upon what it is, does save money. Maybe yes, maybe no, but it certainly will um, can save time if you purchase them. I like to buy a pecan pie and a um, 
Marie Callender Dutch apple pie. And then my daughter-in-law, one of them will bring sweet potato pies and banana pudding and um, different like little cheesecakes and for, to, for dessert. So we, we usually have that. Sue says she's also doing less. She'll usually replace the decor that she's retired or threw away because it was unusable. But this year she's planning on using what she has and then may shop after holiday sales if she feels the need. Yeah, I get it. So Alberta says daughter is due to give birth on November 9th. So she's not helping too much with cooking. She asks that the son-in-law and the grandchildren ages 15 to nine help out because they share the cooking every year. Oh, absolutely. If your daughter-in-law or your daughter's due to give birth in a few weeks, she certainly doesn't want to be on her feet for a long period of time trying to cook. But if you've got a 15-year-old and nine-year-old grandson and you've got a son-in-law, they can certainly help out with some things. Give them good directions and they should be able to help you. Nita said she makes personalized stockings for Christmas and Hanukkah for everybody last year. And she also made giving plates for everybody. I like the idea of the personalized stockings for Christmas and Hanukkah. And then also the idea of giving plates. So the giving plates, tell me more about that. I'm not sure what that is. I'm thinking that giving plates are when you fix a plate for them to take home, but I don't know. So let us know. Let us know what that is. So Vicky says it's true when it comes to saving time, but sometimes saving time is not the issue. Sometimes you just want to do it because I know sometimes I'll be, well, like today, I made some homemade chicken noodle soup for my sister who is sick with a cold. Not blue skies, but I'm thinking blue skies might be soon because this sister is here visiting her. Well, visiting all of us, but she's staying with blue skies. <clears throat> and right now she's got a sore throat and a cough. And uh, so I made some chicken noodle soup to take over there. Well, now I've got a scratchy throat. So who knows? We'll see. All right. So now let's talk about food and some of the traditions that go along with food. And I'm going to take a quick sip of water. Like I said, my throat's getting a little scratchy, so I'm going to take some tea tonight that's got like some throat coat or something like that. All right. So the holiday meal can be a hot button topic. It really can. And there are just so many traditions that go along with the holidays and go along with food. So that's why I say sometimes the holiday meal can be a hot button topic, but it doesn't have to be. If you usually have this or that for your holiday meal, uh, let's say if you typically have the traditional Thanksgiving dinner for Thanksgiving day and everybody wants to have that traditional dinner, then have that. If you want something different, go with the flow and make the traditional dinner. But here's the thing. You can also say, well, I'm going to bring such and such. So let's say they tell me, okay, now, Denise, I want you to bring this candy sweet potatoes. And I'll say, okay, I'll bring those. But I'm also going to bring some roasted Brussels sprouts because there's something else that I want to contribute that's not necessarily on the menu. Go with the flow, bring whatever it is that you're asked for the traditional dinner, and then bring that other thing that you want to bring and just let it be on the buffet with all the other food and then just see how people enjoy it. And that way, um, you and your family can enjoy all their traditional favorites, but you can also introduce that new dish. And here's another thing. When you're making your holiday dinner, don't make anything different unless you also make the old standbys. One year I decided to make a different kind of stuffing or not stuffing, but dressing. Mickey Blue Skies had a fit. She's like, don't be mixing things up and making something new on Thanksgiving. You know, you're supposed to make the traditional stuff. So the next year I made the traditional dressing 
And then I also made that new sausage dressing that I loved the year before and wanted to try. So don't mix it up. Make your traditional day dinner as expected. But if you want to introduce something new, have that something new along with whatever it is you normally have. And here's the other thing. You may also have new family members. So there could be some new brides, some new grooms, but new family members that are now a part of the family. And they may have some traditions from their birth family that they would like to bring to their new family. Be inclusive. Allow them to bring that new dish or whatever that they want to have and let that be their contribution to the dinner so that they feel included. And make sure, boom, 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 make sure that if you're hosting, you request that everyone brings something. Now, it's one thing if they're coming from out of town. Now, I'm not expecting anybody coming from out of town to bring any food. They play, they've had to pay for a plane ticket to get here, so I'm not going to ask that. But people that are local can bring a dish. There's no reason why, just because you're the host, that you have to prepare everything. Now, typically, the host will prepare the meat and provide the drinks. But everyone else that is coming, including friends, can bring a dish. So you prepare your menu, decide what it is that you want to have, and let them know what dish on the menu you want them to bring. Now, if you've got someone with specialties, then, of course, they're going to do that. Like in my family, my sister, Lavina, is the potato salad maker. So we always ask her to bring the potato salad. She gets sick of bringing potato salad sometimes. But it's like, look, no, we don't want anybody else to make potato salad but her. Mickey Blue Skies is the sweet potato maker. So sometimes I have to help her peel those potatoes. But she makes the best candy sweet potatoes you've ever tasted. She can make them just like my mom. And my mom made them just like her mom. So, yes, you might have someone who's pretty good at a certain dish. Well, then assign them that dish. Now, let's say you're bringing a dish. You're a young homemaker, and now you're bringing a dish. Well, then bring something that you can make pretty easily. Pick something off the list that's pretty simple. Or if you're assigned something that you want to make, Give it a try before the holiday time comes along. Like give yourself a run through maybe a week before to try to make it to see how it works out. You and your family or you and your boo can eat it. And then the day of the holiday, when you have to bring it to the family, you already know and you feel more confident on how to do that. So Nefertiri says, growing up in New York City, she loves how the traditional Thanksgiving foods vary from ethnicity to ethnicity. Yes, I have to agree. So African, Italian, Russian, Caribbean, everyone giving thanks in their own special way. So that's why I said that traditional Thanksgiving dinner earlier, and we'll be talking about that in a minute, because each culture, each ethnicity will have different things that is traditional to their holiday times. If you've ever watched Ma Martha Stewart and looked at some of the things that's traditional for her family, she's got a strong German background. So she talks about schnitzel and some other kind of um, little fry pies that her grandma used to make and different things like that. So there's different things that each ethnicity will have. So yes, Nefertiri, thank you for reminding me of that. So Nita says she etches the giving plate for each family. Oh, with a poem that gives them permission to put a dessert, cookies, brownies, et cetera, and pass it on to family and friends. Oh, how nice. What a nice tradition. Alberta says she's the only one that makes mac and cheese. I'm the mac and cheese maker in this family. So I make the mac and cheese. Blue Skies makes the sweet potatoes. The Vita makes the... Um, Potato salad, Tina will make the fruit salad. And then um, my daughter-in-law, Charity, will bring some roasted Brussels sprouts. And my other daughter-in-law brings a dessert. So yeah, we have it covered. So Sarah says her family, her husband and his family is Chinese and she's Caucasian. 
and she's trying to think of ways to incorporate American and Chinese food, for instance, replacing turkey for duck. Oh, yeah, you could very easily replace turkey for duck. Depending upon how many people you're going to have, ducks aren't quite as big. So uh, you could certainly have that duck and some other form of meat, depending upon how, you know, how big it is. But yeah, you could easily do that. And then you could even have a dish of like mashed potatoes, but also have some rice or something like that. You could certainly incorporate some of those Chinese traditions, egg rolls and all that kind of stuff. So talk to your mother-in-law and find out what kinds of things that she like to make for Thanksgiving. And the two of you kind of plan it together. That would be so nice. Now, if she's traveling, then of course she's not going to bring any food with her, but she might be interested in making something once she gets there. So yes. Now, Rachel Anderwill says she loves Yorkshire pudding. I've never had that. And I, I don't know, I'll have to investigate that this year because I always read about it in my historical novels. They talk about Yorkshire pudding. So is it like a sweet, I'm guessing? So I'll have to learn more about that. Okay. Oh, and then Rachel also says, consider mushrooms. Chinese food is mushroom heavy and easy to create a dish for Thanksgiving with mushrooms. Also Chinese dumplings. So yeah, you can have a combination of items on the table that incorporates both, uh, both um, sides of the family's heritage. So yes. And if I was at your house, I'd be sampling all the Chinese food as well as all the American food. So yeah, definitely you can do that. Um, I, I agree with that. Okay. Oh, so Rachel says Yorkshire pudding is like a meaty, savory croissant. Okay, so it's kind of like a little meat pie. Okay. Yeah, the British have those kind of things quite a bit. So, okay. So let's see. Uh, so now let me talk about a couple of things. So let me just share about my family. For example, we used to have Thanksgiving dinner and Christmas dinner every year at my grandmother's home, my mom's mother's home. And then when the family got to be too large or those grandparents were gone, then we started having dinner at my mom's house with her, my dad, and then her six children and our spouses and all of our children. And then um, when I got married and had my own family, my husband and I started to rotate holidays. So we'd have Thanksgiving one year with my family. Then the next year we'd have Thanksgiving with his side of the family. And we would rotate it like that. So Thanksgiving was never a problem. Or rather, so Thanksgiving, we alternated. Christmas was never a problem because the Jordans always celebrated Christmas on Christmas Eve in the evening. And then the Stuarts celebrated Christmas on Christmas Day. So I could go to both those without any problem. So for you, um, so today, now that our children are adults with their families and two of the three live far away, they have the same situation. So they rotate. Thanksgiving holidays, as well as the Christmas holidays to make it fair. So if the two that live away were here for Thanksgiving this year, the next Thanksgiving, they're going to be with the other side of the family. And then every Christmas, my daughter comes, but my son and his family, they rotate Christmases because that's just what they do. Now, I'm not always happy when it's not my year for them to come. But it makes it easy for them. And I don't gripe about it. I just figure it out and just keep it moving. So let me ask you guys, how do you handle the holiday season? Tell me in the chat or in the comments if you're on the replay. So how do you handle the holiday season when you've got your side of the family and then your partner's side of the family? Not saying that they're not both your family, but if we have the Stuarts and we have the Jordans, how do we handle holidays with those? So I already shared with you what we do. What do you guys do? Tell me in the comments. And uh, oh, 
Oh, so Michelle says, if I've ever had the fluffy baked German pancakes, Yorkshire pudding is the same ingredients, just a different form. No, I've not had the fluffy baked German pancakes, but I love a lot of the Martha Stewart recipes and I've tried several of them, but maybe, maybe this year at uh, Christmas time, I'll try the German pancakes because we typically will have my daughter will fix omelets for breakfast and then we'll also have pancakes to go along with that. But that sounds fun to have those pancakes. And then uh, Rachel says also a manapua or baked char. Oh, some other stuff. She's talking to um, Sarah. So, okay, I'll get that off. So they're talking about things that they can have. All right, so I'm waiting on you guys to tell me how you handle the holiday season. And I'm going to move on and I'll come back to look to see what you guys say. I'm going to talk to my young homemakers right now. And then I'll come back and see what you guys dropped in the chat or put in the comments. So for my young homemakers, I have two pieces of advice. One, plan to alternate visits for the various holidays. And keep track of where you were in a planner or some such so you don't forget. Because the situation can come up. Well, you know, we went to your mom's last year. So this year's time to go to my mom's. No, no, no. We went to your mom's last year. No, no, no. So keep track of it. Put it in your planner. Write it down somewhere so that you can go back and say, okay, last year we went to your mom's. So this year we're going to my mom's because you don't want to have an argument over something as simple as that when you can easily look back and sort it out. So there's that. And then if you go to one parent's for the holiday dinner, if you're living in the same town, say, for example, we go to my mom's for dinner, then we could go to his folks for dessert. If you're living in the same town, if you're not living in the same town and it involves a long drive or a plane trip, so travel is involved, then you're looking at monies that need to be set aside for travel. And that's going to have to go into your holiday budget. So there's that. And if you know next year is your turn to go to his folks or to your folks and a plane ticket is involved, start saving this year for that plane ticket. Because you guys know plane tickets right now are crazy. So there's that. And then my second piece of advice for my young homemakers is start your own traditions. Start your own traditions and it's okay to do that. Now, am I saying don't go to your folks for the holiday season? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. But what I am saying is start a tradition for you and your own little family. If it's just you and your boo or you and your family, you got a couple kids uh, or you're a single mom with kids, a family, whatever your family happens to be, your nuclear family, Start a tradition for the two, three, four, or five of you. And what might that look like? Well, maybe you have a pre-Thanksgiving dinner that's just for you and your immediate family. And you have it two to three weeks before the Thanksgiving holiday. And you can decide what you have on that menu. You can either make a traditional Thanksgiving dinner. You can make meatballs and spaghetti. You can make whatever you like but you're gonna decorate and set up as if it was Thanksgiving. And you're gonna let your kids get all excited. We're having our pre-Thanksgiving dinner. It's just gonna be the three of us and you know our own little family. We're gonna do blah, blah, blah. Maybe you have some fun little DIYs or whatever, but start your own tradition so that as your family grows, they have that memory of doing things just the two of you. Now, if it's just you and your boo, meaning you and your hubby or whoever that happens to be, um, you guys don't have any children yet, you can still do the same thing. You can either have a special dinner just for the two of you, or you can invite some friends over and you can celebrate Friendsgiving, which is usually celebrated anywhere from two to three weeks before Thanksgiving. Typically on Friendsgiving, they have a traditional Thanksgiving Day dinner, but it's a lot less stress because it's just friends. 
So if something doesn't work out quite right, it's okay. You guys laugh and you keep it moving. Or you could have something else. But it's just a time to get together and enjoy each other's company and celebrate the many blessings that you have. So consider that. Now, I was talking to my sister today, one of my four sisters, and her daughter and her family. There's three of them, her, her daughter and her daughter's husband, and they have one little girl. So those three, they take Thanksgiving and Christmas, and they go on a family vacation, just the three of them. They go on a family vacation at Thanksgiving time and at Christmas time. So the typical times when all the rest of us are going on vacations, they're at home doing whatever it is they're doing. But Thanksgiving and Christmas, they are taking a family vacation, just the three of them. That's their family tradition. Um, one of her other daughters always goes to the husband's side of the family for Thanksgiving, or they have something at home. And this is my, this one sister is a pastor's wife. Her husband's a pastor. They get invited out so much that, you know, they're, they're not usually home. So their family has established a certain pattern for their own holiday traditions and they get together at other time. So there's that. So just cre create your own holiday tradition. Whenever we go to Thanksgiving or Christmas at my daughter's and my daughter started a tradition of having a pre Thanksgiving day dinner and she would invite us and we would fly out there and then other family members would come or friends in the city in which she lives and we get together we'd have a traditional thanksgiving day dinner but one of the things that always happens when we're at her house is she has her dad make some kind of a crap that the kids and everybody can work on just to have something a little bit different to do so think about what holiday tradition you can have all right so now let me back up for a while and just kind of see so um I see that Sarah P, her first time live. Sarah, welcome. Ladies, welcome, Sarah, to the live show. I'm so glad you are here. And um, let's see. Michelle says they call German pancakes hoot nanny. And that's another name. It's kind of an eggy bread-like dish baked in a 9 by 13. I want to try some new dishes like that. I just love trying new foods. So Carol says they alternate Thanksgiving with parents. Uh, Jay Moon, and for some reason I was thinking your name is Julie, but tell me if I'm wrong. But she will cross-stitch napkins with different sayings on them. Oh, such as what you think. Such as uh, thank you for your blessings for this year. Each person goes around the table stating the question on their napkin. So it could be, what are you thankful for? Or what was your blessing for this year? Or something like that. Oh, that is so nice. So no, she's got to plan ahead for that gift. Because you can't get those things cross-stitched in a minute. So she plans ahead to make so many of those cross-stitched napkins. Now, my one question, Miss um, Moon, and tell me if you're, what your name is. We like to call each other by our names over here. Is it Julie? But... How many do you make? And then are you able to reuse them? Like, do you give them to that person or do you take them back, give them, give them a good washing and scrubbing so that there's no stains on them and then you can use them again the next year? Let me know. I'm just interested in that. And uh, Colette, I'm so glad you're here to catch us live as well. Just kind of welcome. And then Sarah P is here also her first live. So she's saying good, good, good uh, evening to everyone. And then Colette says it's a good idea to split up the time based off of a dinner or at um, dessert. Yeah. So I'm going to mom's for dinner and then we're going to go to his mom's for dessert or something like that. Let everyone know ahead of time so that they can expect you and it should work out okay. Uh, so Sarah says she's excited but nervous because she's a young stay-at-home mom in a new home and has a second baby coming in December. Oh, wow. She wants to make this year special, but she's very pregnant and it slows her down. So then, Sarah, one of the things you're going to want to do is think about what can you do to, to plan ahead? 
What are some make ahead dishes that you can do? Get them made ahead and in the freezer. Uh, some things you might have to make the day that morning of, but you can make the day before. But there are many dishes that you can make several days to a week ahead and put them in the freezer and then pull them out the day before that you're going to need them. And the other thing is that um, if you're thinking about what are some of the Chinese dishes that you can make as well, if your mother-in-law is close, ask her to make something to share for that holiday and to help you. And I'm sure she'll be glad to do that. But try not to be nervous. Just plan. I've got a um, printable that's in the description box that you can download to help you plan what you need to do to get the house ready for the holiday. But then start thinking about what you need to do to get your meals ready. And Leona Dooley at Ebony, Ivy, and Time in the Kitchen, her last two shows were about getting ready for the holidays. And she's talked about several things. So do go and watch those. And I will link them in the description box as well. Michelle says she started making their Thanksgiving dinner the Friday after Thanksgiving while her kids were still at home. She wanted to eliminate the pressure on them for Thanksgiving Day. Oh, okay. So you would make Thanksgiving dinner day on Friday so that when the kids were home, say they're home from school or from college, then they could go and visit all the family that they wanted to visit on that day and didn't have to feel obligated to be at home for dinner and then had dinner with the immediate family the next day. I like that idea. That's a good idea. Uh, yeah, she knew the kids would be moving around and may have lots of places to be in one day. She said that sometimes they had five places to visit when they were a young couple. I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. Hello, M. Thomas. What is your name? We like to know people's names over here. Yes, you, and, and you're right. You can... Um, have food that you choose to have. It doesn't have to be turkey and dressing. <clears throat> so Leanne says she has to work during the holidays. Any advice on what can be made ahead? I do plan to talk about that next week, but you can make your mac and cheese ahead. You can make um, your mashed potatoes a couple of days ahead. You can make the mashed potatoes ahead and put them in the fridge. Um, you could cut up all of your vegetables that you're going to use for your turkey or dressing. You could probably even make your turkey a couple of days ahead, have it sliced up, put it in an airtight container and have it in the refrigerator so that, you know, you've got things going. Um, you can make your dressing ahead, um, things like that. So, yeah, but we're going to talk more about that next week. Okay, so um, again, Jay Moon, what is your name? But they reuse them every year. She has 12 of them. It's their tradition. Oh, I like that idea. So Vicki says her and her husband always attend Thanksgiving with her mom and the other family members. Since her mom's gotten older, they go and assist her with the various dishes. Yeah, I started taking over um, making the holiday dinner when my mom got older. So now I'm kind of like the one that makes the dinner as well. Colette says she loves this time of the year. She usually makes candy yams and red velvet cheesecake. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So Jay's doing laundry. I get it. I got some. I got to um, fold and put away. I got it done, but I got to get it put away. Okay, so Rachel and Sarah are still talking about different kinds of foods. Okay, so there's that. So again, so to my young homemakers, do start your own traditions and you get to decide what that tradition looks like. The other thing is since Christmas is hard on the heels of Thanksgiving and so many people have the same food, you might be sick of Thanksgiving type food by the time um, Christmas comes around. So if you're going to do Friendsgiving or your pre-Thanksgiving dinner, you might choose to have something else. That's up to you. Now, let's talk about what you should purchase and when. Oh, excuse me. 
So if you plan to have a turkey on your table, and many people do, call your grocer, your local grocer, like Kroger, Publix, Food Lion, wherever it is you normally shop, and ask when do they plan to get turkeys in for the Thanksgiving holiday? And when will they be on sale? That's an even better question. However, from what I've heard here and there, because of the avian flu, turkeys might be in short supply. That means you might want to start looking for a turkey now. However, any turkey you find now is going to be at a, a premium price. Got hair in my mouth. It's going to be at a premium price. So you have to think about whether or not you want to spend the money now for a turkey that may be going on sale when it gets closer to the Thanksgiving time. Kroger's usually puts theirs on sale about two weeks before Thanksgiving. So there's that to think about. However, you want to make sure you get there and get one. Usually what I will do when they put them on sale, I'll usually buy two, one for Thanksgiving and one for Christmas. And I'll put the one back for Christmas and then pull it out then. And I've got it at a lower price. If you wait and buy your turkey at Christmas time, it's back up to regular prices. So there's that. Or you could decide just to serve a turkey breast. Those are usually frozen and they're a lot easier to find. And then, you know, it, it just kind of helps to sort things out that way. However, if you decide you don't want a turkey or you can't find a turkey, you can also roast a chicken. You can find a large roasting chicken, get two of them, and use that as your centerpiece instead of a turkey. You can have roasted chicken. And I did a video just not too long ago about a holiday roasted chicken. That was amazing. So you might want to be sure to check that out. Hey, Patience, just glad to have you with us. You're not late. I'm just glad you're here. Um, so again, I mentioned the two large roasting chickens, just in case you can't find a turkey. And um, like I said, if push comes to shove and you can't find a turkey, make a roasting chicken. Anything you would normally do to roast that turkey, you can do to roast the chicken. So consider that. And you could do one chicken or two, depending upon the size of your family. If I was going to have to do roasted chicken for the family for Thanksgiving, I'd probably have to do three. Uh, because I have a lot of people that come over for that. And then my friend Mary at Mary's Nest, she said she usually does two small turkeys rather than one big one, just because they can tend to get a little bit tougher when they're that big. And Ronnie says she will sometimes buy two small turkeys so that she has four legs and three wings, etc. Well, if they've got four legs, they better have four wings unless something's wrong with that turkey. Oh, so Lurker Smurf says Kroger is having a sale right now on dark pieces and whole chickens at 99 cents a pound. I'm going to have to go and check that out because uh, Kroger usually has the same special running around the country. So I'm going to check that out tomorrow. And then uh, TJ says, her family likes Cornish game hens for Thanksgiving. I used to make Cornish game hens years ago. I haven't made them though in years, but yeah, they're very good. And then Jerry says, since it's only her four children that eat meat and Jerry's a vegetarian, they do love to have the Cornish game hens for themselves for Thanksgiving. Cause yeah, they could have one little game hen each and that would take care of it. And then Connie says, instead of roasting her husband smokes a turkey in the charcoal barbecue. Yeah, you know, my husband has a friend that smoked a turkey for us one year and it was delicious. But just decide what it, whatever it is that you want to do. You want to do turkey, then start looking now. Um, and then um, someone earlier said that there was, oh, Lurker said there was dark meat on sale, dark pieces and whole chicken. So is it turkey thighs that are on sale? turkey drumsticks, but it's worth checking into. And then, um, so now India Princess, and I've forgotten what you told me your name was, but you said though that you're asking, does everyone typically have a traditional menu Thanksgiving? 
Well, someone mentioned earlier, what's traditional for many people is not traditional for all. So let's talk about what the traditional Thanksgiving Day dinner is in America, in the United States. In the mainstream, in general, the traditional Thanksgiving Day dinner is turkey, dressing, not stuffing. Stuffing, you stuff it inside the turkey, and they, that is not recommended anymore. You make the dressing and put it on the side. It reduces the chances of uh, food poisoning. You might stuff the turkey with an apple or an orange or something like that, but you don't eat those. So turkey, dressing, cranberry sauce, mashed potatoes and gravy, green beans, corn, maybe a green salad, and pumpkin pie. That's considered the traditional Thanksgiving dinner. But every culture has their own. For example, in my family, we're an African-American family, so we will typically have turkey, um, and we will have um, dressing, cornbread dressing, not white bread dressing, but cornbread dressing, sweet potatoes, candy sweet potatoes, macaroni and cheese, collard greens, corn, um, sometimes green beans and sometimes not if I'm making collard greens, but I also have a couple of family members that can't eat collard. So then I'll do green beans, just regular green beans for them. And my sister has this holiday green bean recipe that I like to make. So sometimes we'll have that along with the collard greens. And that's it, I believe. A mac and cheese, collard greens, candy sweet potatoes, uh, mashed potatoes. So that's what we have. Other families might have a sweet potato casserole instead of candied sweet potatoes. I know in many of my Caucasian friends, they will have green bean casserole instead of green beans. They do green bean casserole. Um, my daughter-in-law, her family always had roasted Brussels sprouts in addition to the other things that they would have for dinner. So what's traditional is what's traditional for you and your family. There's not one traditional for all. I would guess that an Asian American family would have a few traditional things on their table that are Asian oriented then, uh, and completely different from what we might have on the table. They might have turkey and dressing, but they might not. So it just all depends. And as someone pointed out, Russian families, Italian families, they have different foods that are unique to their culture on the table for that holiday period. Okay. So India Princess said they usually do a goose or a duck. Exactly. I think in the UK, a lot of times they do a goose or a duck. And if you um, watch the Charles Dickens movies like Tiny Tim and Scrooge and that kind of thing. They always had a goose or a Christmas goose or a duck for the holiday. Whereas I think the turkey thing started here in the U.S. because of that was the big bird that was readily available. And you know how the legend, the history and all that got started. So there's that. Sylvia on the go is here. Hello, Sylvie. So India Princessa says, that's my birth name. Oh, India Princessa, that's your name. Oh, that's fine. So India Princessa says that she is Latina and Arabic. So their menu is different every year. And older members of the family agree not to eat the same thing every year. So it could range from seafood to Dominican. Okay, and see, so your family has sorted it out. I like it. So Vicky says, got to have those collards and mac and cheese. Whereas I was talking to a friend who lives in either the UK or maybe she's in Australia. And she said she was going to try my mac and cheese recipe. She said mac and cheese is not a thing in her country. So it was very interesting that we talked about that. And yeah, cornbread dressing. Colette agrees. Dressing, yams, mac and cheese. Okay, so so yeah, so people are talking about some of their traditional things. Um, 
So I, I already mentioned what's on the menu, and it's funny because that was the name thing. The next thing that was on my list for me to talk about was what was on the menu. So when you are talking to whoever it is that's planning the dinner, then again, find out what it is they want you to bring. Or if you're hosting dinner, let them know what you want them to bring. So we've already talked a little bit about what your holiday menu is like. So I got that. And you know what? My mom would ask me every year when I was going to host the dinner, what are we having for the holiday menu? What are we going to have? What are we going to have? I said, mom. We've had the same thing for Thanksgiving and Christmas since I was born. You know what we're having. Well, what do you want me to bring? So it was just funny. Okay. So now let's talk about some things that you, what you might want to uh, pick up. So I'm going to move back a little bit. I got some things out on the counter. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of wanted to share this real quick. Some things that you might see. Somebody gave me a super chat, but I can't see who it is from here. But thank you. I'll check when I let me come and check now. That way I won't be rude. Oh my, thank you. So Rachel says, Do I use mustard? Oh no, 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 no. I put mustard in my mac and cheese. I do have a video for my mac and cheese, so be sure to check that out. It's really easy, but I, I, I'll tell you what I do use in it. So I had them out. I use carnation milk in my mac and cheese. I use um, some mild shredded cheddar and other, maybe another kind of cheese when I'm making it. But let's talk about things to pick up right now. So when you think about making, uh, if you're going to do roasted chicken, if you're going to make turkey, if you're going to make dressing, those kinds of things, one of the things that I encourage you to pick up is some Pepperidge Farm cornbread um, stuffing mix. I use this as my base. It's already seasoned. The cornbread is nice and dry. I will make a pan of my own cornbread, but I will use this as a base and go from there. You will also want to make sure you're picking up lots of celery, lots of carrots, and lots of onions because those are what you're going to use to serve as a rack to set your turkey or your chickens on when you are roasting them. So be sure to get those. In addition that you're going to need the carrots, the onions, and the celery to put in your dressing. And as I mentioned earlier, you don't stuff the turkey anymore. It caused too many cases of food poisoning. So you're going to make the dressing in a pan on the side. You can put a lemon or an apple or something like that in the turkey, but when the turkey is cooked, you're going to pull that out and you're not going to eat it. So there's that. Now, sweet potatoes. We always make sure we get sweet potatoes because candy sweet potatoes is a staple. I know in some families, they talk about sweet potato casserole or sweet potato souffle. We do sweet potato, uh, candy sweet potatoes in the oven or on top of the stove. And I do have a video on how to do them each way. If you're going to have mashed potatoes, and a lot of families will have mashed potatoes with gravy, you want to make sure you're picking up potatoes right now. They're not too expensive. Or you can buy a box of Idaho uh, original uh, potato flakes and make mashed potatoes that way. And don't feel shame if you decide to use box mashed potatoes. You can make them up and they can taste absolutely delicious depending upon what you do to use them up. So there is that to think about. Also, you want to make sure that you have got nuts and dried fruits for baking. So depending on what it is you bake for Thanksgiving or Christmas, make sure you've got plenty of um, dried fruits and nuts for that. Also pick up some lemons. You put lemon in so many things that you're making at Thanksgiving and Christmas time. So be sure to pick up some of those. Lemons are not the cheapest right now, but you're going to need them. So pick some of those up. Also, chicken broth. You put chicken broth in so many things during the holiday season. So pick up several boxes and... Um, Pick that up unless you make your own. If you make your own, you want to make sure you've got plenty of jars of chicken broth in the freezer so that you've got it to use for your cooking. 
I also brought out some flour so you can think about picking up extra flour for holiday baking. And we're looking at, again, Thanksgiving, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, and Christmas. And there may be some other holidays in there that I don't know about. So, but make sure you've got the things you need to prepare the foods that your family either likes or is part of your family tradition. So let me get this off the screen. Uh, there. Sorry. Now, one of the other things that tends to happen at holiday time is you have family members in to stay. So you want to make sure you're picking up extra foods for breakfast. So our family likes sausage, particularly turkey sausage. So my husband likes to cook this uh, Jimmy Dean's fully cooked turkey sausage. It cooks up in the microwave nicely. So we will get extra packs of this, put it in the freezer so it's here at holiday time. So think about what meals are you going to feed to your family when they come? Are they going to be there for breakfast? What are you going to cook for either Thanksgiving breakfast or for Christmas breakfast. Now me, I'm not cooking Thanksgiving breakfast, so my husband's gonna have to come in here thin for himself and then get out of the kitchen. Christmas time though, we get up Christmas morning after we open the gifts, then there's this big breakfast we all have together and then dinner is later. And I already know that for Christmas breakfast, my daughter, her and her uh, family will usually make the green family omelets. My husband will usually make pancakes and I might try those new pancakes this year. And We'll have hot chocolate and some other things. So what are the traditions that you'd like to have or you want to try? Maybe you want to make a couple of breakfast casseroles so that you don't have to worry about cooking that morning. You can get on to doing something else. So make sure you've got the things to do that. And a lot of times those breakfast casseroles require chicken broth. So make sure you've got extra of that. You want to make sure you've got baking soda and baking powder to help with your holiday baking. That is not the time that you want to check and your can of baking powder is empty. So make sure you've got those things. We already looked at those. And then I've got this pack of cornmeal out. And I got it in here because it kind of leaks a little bit. So I set it in this basket. But since I like to make cornbread dressing, I need to be able to make my own cornbread. Now, I will use Jiffy Mix in a pinch if I have to, but I really like to use the Jiffy Mix to make cornbread to serve at the table. So I'll use some other cornmeal to make my own cornbread for the uh, dressing that I'm going to make. So make sure you've got that. And then of course you've got your Jiffy Mix so you can make your cornbread muffins to serve with dinner. What's one thing uh, India Princessa on almost every table is cranberry sauce. I prefer the whole berry cranberry sauce, but some people like the jelly, but you want to make sure you have what your family likes. So I know I, I've only got one can of jelly cranberry sauce, so I need to get a couple more because most of the family likes the jelly, whereas I prefer the whole berry, so I'll get some more of that. If you're a pumpkin pie kind of family, you want to pick up some curing pumpkin, and I've seen them in the stores already, so it's not a problem locating this, so make sure you get some of that. And then your carnation milk, you're going to need that for your uh, mac and cheese and for many different kinds of baking cream, um, cheesecakes and things like that. Or you might need Eagle Brand sweetened condensed milk. So start picking up these things now as you're planning your holiday budget. Either pick up, think about what you're going to cook, how many cans of carnation milk will you need. I know it takes three cans of carnation milk for me to make two huge pans of mac and cheese for the family. So that's three that I know I need for that. I know it takes two cans of carnation milk to make one batch of fruit salad. So then now I'm, I'm up to five cans of carnation milk. If my son decides he wants to make his cherry cheese pie, he's gonna need some Eagle Brand sweetened condensed milk. So I'm gonna need some Philadelphia cream cheese and a couple cans of this. So think about what's on the menu Start making that list, and as you go to the grocery store, pick up a few of those items as you go. And then, of course, your regular veggies, green beans, corn, those kind of things. You've been picking those up as you go. But here's the thing. If you've been picking up cans of corn or cans of green beans for your family, you may not have enough 
extra to serve a bunch of other people. So if you're going to need four cans of green beans to serve a big family group, then pick up four specifically for that purpose. So you know you've got what you need and then kind of check it off as you go. Make sure you've got at least one full jar of um, salad dressing or mayonnaise to make your potato salad or whatever other kind of salads you may need that you may need in the miracle that you may need in the making of that dish. And then sweeteners, make sure you've got some honey and then sugar on hand for your holiday baking. And now, I mentioned gravy other, earlier, and I do have a video where I showed how I made a turkey breast and how to make gravy. You can make gravy so easily, but let's say you decide you don't want to make gravy. Well, I'm telling you, Heinz makes a pretty good gravy. And so you can buy Heinz turkey gravy and go from there. However, most turkeys or roasting chickens will come with a packet of giblets in, this, in the cavity and the turkeys will also have a packet of gravy starter in them and you can use that. What I will usually do is I will uh, do a semi-homemade gravy. I will take maybe a half a jar of Heinz and then I will also take that gravy pack and I will make the gravy and mix it all together and add some of my drippings and juice it up and I've got some delicious gravy. One year, I was uh, putting the gravy back in the jar and my mom saw me. She says, what? She says, you bought that gravy? I thought you made that gravy. And I had, it was semi-homemade. I had juiced it up, but I had started with this as the base and she caught me. I said, mom, it's semi-homemade. And then of course, spices. These are just your traditional spices, salt, which most of you will have. This happens to be sea salt. But one of the spices that I like quite a bit is this McCormick, Perfect Pinch, lemon and pepper seasoning. It's really good. It's really good on roasted chickens and different things like that. So it'll be great to use at holiday time. You want to make sure you've got some cinnamon, paprika, pumpkin pie spice, nutmeg, cloves. I need the cloves and I also need the cinnamon sticks when I make my wassail for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Ginger is used in quite a bit of baking, as well as vanilla. I didn't get the vanilla down. I forgot about it, but I just thought about it. But of course, you know, your pepper, your sage, those kind of things. Think about those spices that you use. Check your pantry to make sure you've got them. And if you don't, put them on the list because a jar of spice like this can cost you 4 to $5, sometimes even 6 depending upon what brand you like to buy. So you do want to start getting those things early. Okay. All right. So what foods have I forgotten? What foods do you absolutely positively have to have for your holiday meal that I didn't put on the list? Let me know. Tell me in the chat or on the comment section. All right, let's see what you guys are saying when I couldn't read them. Oh, sweet potato pie. India Princessa says sweet potato pie. She'd like to try it. It is absolutely delicious. Um, I like pumpkin pie and I like sweet potato pie, but I prefer sweet potato pie. And uh, it is really so good. I'll have to make one and um, do a video with it. And uh, is anyone hungry now? I'm starving. Hey, how you doing? Thank you for stopping by to, to join me tonight. I appreciate it. So Jay Moon says her dryer broke. She's hanging clothes out on the clothesline, brought them in to finish to dry. I came across my channel the other day. So thanks for my advice on hanging laundry. Oh, you are quite welcome. I love to hang clothes out when the weather is conducive. I just love it. Hey, Biddy Boo, how you doing? I haven't seen you, girl. It's been years. So thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. Uh, oh, Mom, thank you. Uh, let's see. 
Ronnie says, how can we store potatoes now for Thanksgiving? You know, sweet potatoes tend to last a long time. Thanksgiving is about, what, six weeks away? So you can do one or two things. You can get them and then you can peel them. You can put them in the freezer. You can make the sweet potato dish and uh, have it in the freezer. All I have to do is pop it out and put it in the oven. Um, so you can decide that. Sometimes you can wrap potatoes in newspaper and, and set them in a cool, dark place. But yeah, it'll be hard to keep them that long. But I've already got some that I peeled and put into the freezer. So Jay Moon says they would store potatoes in a cool, dark place. Yes, store them in a cool, dark place. Sage is hard to find, really. She, uh, The whole mom says she visited three stores one year to find some. Wow. So was it fresh sage that you couldn't find? Dried sage? Um, I've got some sage that I've dried and have in a jar that I grew myself in my kitchen garden. But wow, I didn't know that. Oh, yes, please give a hug. Tap the like button. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah, Ronnie, you don't have to store sweet potatoes in the fridge. Store them in a cool, dark place. So Nita B says she keeps a couple of pounds of pecans and sage on hand. I try to keep pecans, not pecans, but sage on hand as well, dried in a jar. India Princessa wants to know, do any of us introduce a new dish? I tried introducing new dishes once. Like I said, my family about had an uproar. So I'll just kind of have one new thing on the side. But sure, you can introduce something new, but you just have to have your old standbys. That's the thing. If you're going to bring in something new for them to try, it's okay. But have your old standbys so they can get what they're used to. Jay Moon says she doesn't like cranberry sauce. You know what? It's a, a cultivated taste. It's okay. I love it. Hey, Jacqueline, good to have you here. Oh, excuse me. I'm so indelicate. Now, um, in India Princessa said that she likes the canned version of cranberry sauce. And I like cranberry sauce, but I like ocean spray cranberry sauce. It's very good. But it is very easy to make your own with fresh cranberries. And I have done that. I do have a recipe for that as well. So Biddy Boo says, and Biddy Boo's name is Dana. She says, put potatoes in a cool, dry place like under your bed or in a closet that stays cool and the potatoes will last. Just make sure you have air can circulate around them. So I will usually keep them in a bin out in the garage where it tends to be cooler. Hmm. So Jay says, I have her name. I'm not sure whose name you have. Is it Julie? But yeah, you're new here. That's fine. We're glad to have you. And then Lurker said that she, she started her fall herbs. Time and tarragon have come up so far. What are you on the sage and a few others? Let me guys show you my sage. Hang on. I'm doing like Naomi now. I'm going to get something and bring it back. But yeah. Yeah, I'm going to show you my sage. Hang on. Here's my sage. I made this. I've got about three jars of sage like this in my pantry. And then I also have some jars of lemon balm and some other things that are in there too. So, so yeah. All right. So what have I left off the list? Let's see. Oh, Alberta, I used to make giblet turkey gravy. I would take the giblets and I would kind of grind them up a little bit and then make them make the gravy with that. But yes, I love that. Oh, you say you think I buy expensive spices? I like the McCormick brand. And I also like the, um, what's that other brand? It's with the black top. The um, private collection brand. This one is from Kroger and it's a pretty good. 
Depends on how much money I got that day when I go to the store, too. So, yeah, Lurker says he's going to mix up a new batch of pumpkin pie spice. Oh, so Anna says she's of German descent, and they always have sauerkraut with turkey dinner. Okay, see, that's showing people's ethnicity coming in. I'm good, Betty Boo. I am good. Uh, oh, yeah, biscuits and banana nut bread. I made some banana nut bread for my husband the other day. He loved it. And then, of course, got to make biscuits in the morning. I'm not sure who Jay's. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. You guys are really talking to one another. And I like that, that you guys are really getting into conversation with each other. Okay. Hey, Ventures Bookshelf said that she opened YouTube to watch how they prep videos and saw that I was doing a live. So thank you for joining me tonight. I appreciate that. Oh, yes. I forgot to mention butter. Vicky said butter is a must. Yes, you have to put butter in so many dishes. So definitely you got to make sure you have plenty of butter. Jerry likes to do carrot cake and pineapple upside down cake. I used to make pineapple upside down cake for my dad. Uh, but I love carrot cake, too. I just love it. So Michelle says uh, her aunt doesn't like cranberry sauce, but likes the way her son makes it. So, yeah, it's real easy to make. So, yeah. Oh, a pineapple pie. She used to make that for her dad, but hasn't made one. You know, I used to make oxtail soup for my dad, too, and I haven't made it in a long time. So I bought some oxtail the other day, and I'm going to make some oxtail soup for my husband. We'll see how he likes it. Lurker will try new dishes at Thanksgiving, and then at Thanksgiving, it's the same thing. Oh, fried turkey. I've heard of people who fried a turkey. But brown sugar, yes. I've got, I picked up a bag of brown sugar when I got my ridiculous grocery haul. If you guys missed that, check it out. But yes, butternut squash. You can do butternut squash and cook it. It'll come out tasting almost like uh, sweet potatoes. And... Uh, Yes, uh, mashed potatoes with sour cream, butter, or whatever you want, and they freeze well. Um, you might have to put in more liquid to reheat it. I don't know if I'd want to put the sour cream in it before I froze it. I might want to do that after I got it out of the freezer, just so the sour cream doesn't separate or something like that. Hey, Dee, good to have you here. Lurker says, if you're going to serve cranberry sauce, it better have the ridges. I like my whole berry cranberry sauce. Hey, Pam, good to have you here as well. Um, I've had mashed potatoes after freezing, and they've been fine. So Jay says she's um, washing her apron tomorrow, has dust on it, and if you are all amazing. Okay, so if you're washing your apron, remember most of them you want to wash in cold water and dry them on a low uh, a low heat cycle, and then you're going to need to press them. Oh, potatoes, onion, and curry. Yeah, because I know, Jerry, you're... Okay. Colette, I've got a video on how I make a cranberry sauce. I got the recipe from Laura Vitale, I think, but there's other ones that you can do. So Brenda says she makes flour bread. Is it flour bread or flat bread? But whatever that is, it's something new. So, okay. All right. So guys, let me read the apron. Tonight's apron note is to practice self-care every day. And the reason why I picked this one for tonight is because the holiday seasons can be so stressful and we've got to take care of ourselves so that we can do the things we need to do for our family. And then I have some happy mail. So I got this happy mail from Debbie Johnson. And I mentioned it last week, but I forgot to bring it upstairs. But look, she sent me some tea to romanticize my life with. Wrote such a nice note. And then 
she included an article in it that talked about romanticizing an ordinary life. It's such a nice article. And I love the fact that she sent me this tea. So, and I've been making orange clove tea every morning, but I've been saving this one so that I could show it to you guys. And then look, I also got some happy mail and look what it says on it. It's got, I got some happy mail again. And look, she even drew on it. She drew the picture and wrote Happy Mail on there. And you guys, I had to laugh when I got it. So first of all, it says, here's a warm cup of tea for you. And this is cranberry and pomegranate decaf pumpkin, spi pumpkin spice, spice dragon red chai. So there's several little bags in here. Look at there. That nice cranberry and pomegranate, decaf pumpkin spice, spice dragon red chai, and cinnamon vanilla. So my viewers know that I've been romanticizing my life with new teas, but this is the cutest part. Look at this. Look at this tote bag that she made me, and look what it says. So there's that. I didn't realize I said that so much until somebody mentioned it. Oh, and then look at this. She sent me an apron. And on the apron, on the front of it, it says, so there's that. So look at that. Isn't this so adorable? Jerry, thank you so much. You have just been so kind to think of me. Look at that. I've got pockets. I didn't realize I said that so much until, I don't know, Roddy or someone mentioned it. And then I guess I must because then I had it on here. So, oh, wait, there's something else in the bag. I forgot. She also sent me a card. And um, a handmade card. Look at there. It says, just because, and I just love bees. One of the aprons we had this year had bees on it. And we sold it out so quick. And then inside is just a really pretty little card. Just a little handmade thing. So I appreciate that. Isn't that nice? Oh, Jerry, I love it. I love it. Blue Skies came by and I said, oh, yeah, look, I got Happy Meal. And my husband is an artist. And he's a retired art teacher. So when I showed him the box, I said, and look, she even painted on it or drew on it. He said, she did that. He was pretty impressed. Pretty impressed. So there's that. Oh, I just said it again. Oh, and then another thing for those of you with YouTube channels, they're rolling up what they call channel handles. So my channel handle is now going to be at this and that with Denise Jordan. That's going to be my handle on YouTube. Now, I don't know when I'm going to use that, but they also gave us new URLs for our YouTube channels. And the new URL for my channel is youtube.com backslash at this and that with Denise Jordan. So that's going to be my new channel URL. So I guess they want us to start using that on all of our stuff. So I'll start working on that. And then, as I mentioned earlier, I did put a link in the description box for my uh, how to prep your house and get ready for the holidays um, printable. So a couple of you guys have already uh, clicked on it. And be sure and check out the um, Deba deal days. So be sure and check that out. Oh, yeah, Jerry. My husband loved it. He thought it was so nice. So, yeah, handmade card and handwritten note. Yes. Oh, and I forgot to mention, too, that I'm not going to do the letter writing class right away. I'm going to postpone that. And after I talked to you guys last week, I'm going to do a homemaking, homekeeping class first. It's going to be a class for new homemakers, young homemakers. So if I've got any new homemakers, young homemakers out there, uh, I would love to hop on a, a Zoom call or a Facebook Live with you so that we could 
I could ask you some questions. And then when I get the course all put together, the first 10 people that jump on calls will get it 50% off. So there's that. I will let Blue Skies know you guys miss her, but she's taking care of my other sister who's standing with her that's ill. So, so there, so I'll, I'll let her know that. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I truly, truly appreciate you jumping on. And then be sure to come back next week because we're going to talk about um, holiday prep again, only we'll get down to the nitty gritty in regards to food. And we will talk about some make ahead meals or make ahead dishes next week. So Sarah, be sure to come back and then be sure and check out Leona Dooley's channel for some of the things that she's already shared about holiday prep. All right, guys. Oh, and be sure and check out my ridiculous grocery haul. And it was ridiculous. I'll see you next time. Bye.